Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of What, what the, the Flock. Flock. And we've got Ashley Freckleton back with us. I'm part so two, excited. Part, part two. Duh, part two. Part two. Part two. The sequel. Hey, Ashley. Part two. And we left hey. you. We left you guys on a on a cliffhanger, right, Ash? We did. Yeah. Sorry, but, guys. Sorry but, about that. Well, no, that's it's, it's good. I mean, you you'd been in you'd been in this uh, uh, place in Romania for about a month. And then things were starting to get interesting for the next stage. And that's kind of where we left things. Yes. Right? But I am going to start with our quote of the day, because this yeah, quote, when I picked it, I did not know it was going to fit so well <laughs> right now to part two. OK, so quote of the day for Miss Ashley. She was powerful, not because she wasn't scared, but because she went on so strongly despite the fear. And that's by Atticus, one of my favorites. Okay, cool. That's beautiful, Shell. Yeah, that, that's that is the, great. That's the perfect tee up for where we're at. Yeah. So yes, Ashley. So you we were we you kind of left us at the the climax of what was going on when you were really getting into this group. I feel like we left a little bit out of kind of reaching the the top tipping point of that climax. Do you want to kind of start there, yeah, and then so we'll start to unwind it after that? So they. I remember they also did an interview where I was sitting, like I had to be naked and sit there with a microphone and I was kind of being asked questions about like, if love presents itself to you and you push love away, like what does that mean about, like, I don't know, all these really vague kind of questions. And I had to right. sit there like naked and vulnerable, like, and answer the questions. And how many people went, would be in the room at that point? About how many people would be around you? Not, not many, probably only two women, like one on the camera and one like asking you the questions, mm -hmm. Got but it. you know, like the, the women that are running the show, Correct. You know, the super shakti ones. Yeah. And, and, and is, is the understanding yeah. that this is going to the, the so-called guru leader or whatever, that's the, what this, what's the purpose of this video? Like, why are they videoing you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. They, I suppose to read my aura and send yeah. it to him. Like, I, I don't know. It was just standard procedure. You know, right, I was like, right. I wasn't yeah. going to. I was no, too afraid to question and, and, and it. Listen, yeah. I, 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 when, when, and listen, I, when my group, uh, you know, we were getting involved with the space people, and I never asked, like, well, are these the good space people or the bad? Like, who are they? <laughs> like, space like, people. Like, 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 certain questions like that, you just don't ask. Well, you're, you're afraid you're, to ask. Well, you're so into it, too. Yeah. Like, I was, I was, you know, yeah. thinking, well, this means Star Wars is real, so this is all great. I don't, I don't need to know details. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's. That it's funny. This cult also communicates with aliens. They're, they're sort of, <laughs> of course, some they kind do. of like supreme <laughs> galactic something fancy, yeah. some kind of network, and they do these like the ceremonies, and there's yeah. names of these like alien figures that they're communicating with, and perfect. I'm pretty sure they think that they stopped. You know how there was a meteorite that like nearly hit yes Russia or something like that. Yes, I think. I think like, or maybe it was a different cult thought they stopped it. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure they think that their, that their meditation and their energy is like protecting the earth, which, you know, you part of the draw cards, right? And the well, people yeah. there are really lovely people. I mean, there's a lot of really mm. annoying people, but there's also a lot of really of course. No, of course. lovely and yeah. open hearted people that are just trying to be their best selves. Also a lot of vulnerable people. Like I, my heart breaks when I think of this girl that I met in in Romania, who I later, you know, spoiler alert, met in Paris. Right. And she had a, like, very uh, repeated relationship with the guru himself. Mm. Um, but this woman had, like, very young, much younger than me, and she, her arms were completely covered in, in self-harm scars. Uh. And I thought to myself, like, what <sighs> have you been through? Like, what kind of emotional pain have you endured and how vulnerable are you? You know, you you are you are so strong that you're around, but you're also so extremely vulnerable. Mm. And you know, these are the people that they get trapped and they they never leave. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, is this particular girl still in? I imagine she would be. I deleted everyone from mm. the school from my social media. At one point, I purged and I just deleted everyone. Right. So I don't know, but um, yeah, it just. Yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of really vulnerable people there. And I remember the friend said to me, like, you know, you don't go to a hospital when you're well, you go when you're sick. <laughs> and so I think, too. like, a lot of people <laughs> end up on a spiritual journey or, you know, on these mm -hmm. yogic paths because they are enduring 
adversity and yeah. you know, there's, but the people there are, are lovely they're be- there's a lot of like, really beautiful lovely people yeah and we do these weird meditations where we'd all like hold hands in the orders of the zodiac so you'd have like two libras two scorpios like two capricorns that had to be a male and a female and you had to hold hands like in a certain direction and like send all the energy and like we do we do that for like three hours like i'd stand in a field listening to like trance music holding hands in the orders yeah, of the zodiac wow. i was like this is spiritual yeah <laughs> like, no i, I mean i I, th- I think these things are, are important to kind of call attention to that that um that that you've got such good intentions and you you're meeting other sincere people and all of it kind of builds on itself this is where the peer pressure element is so uh powerful in the way that you're meeting people that it's clear that they're genuine it's mm-hmm. clear that they have also good intentions oh, yeah. it's clear that they're spiritually driven and so you it kind of works against you to, in the sense of thinking well if if i'm having any sort of issue with this then it's my problem you right because look exactly. at all, all these other people you're min, the one many who the i think are smarter than me right. are also into this and so it, i've got and so it's it's and that's why you're not asking a lot of questions you know, the, uh, the, you don't want to, you don't want to make a lot of waves. You don't want to be perceived as being the problem. You always want to, like, I remember yeah. being told that many times that, are you going to be part of the, the problem? The or problem? Part of the solution. It's part of the solution. So right. you yeah. don't want to be that guy. And, and, uh, I think it's important that, that that's the inner struggle we, we would go yeah. through in these situations. And, um, so let's, yeah, let's, let's pick it up and, and see when, you know, what was the next stage to kind of, yeah. uh, made things more clear to you. And you and you think too about the cult just to kind of keep off on my tangent for two seconds. Okay, go you think for of it. like this cult um, dynamic, and you've got your key players up the top, and then down the bottom, you've got all the people that are kind of funding the organization right. and all the really well intentioned people mm. that are all feeding off each other's energy. Yeah, and right. when you're filtering down, there's a lot of really good stuff happening down at this level. You know, there's people opening their hearts and engaging in heart, like eye gazing rituals and ecstatic dance and meditation. And when you do these things, you're going to have physiological and biological responses in your body that feel fantastic. There's a lot of science that backs mindfulness right. practices, you sure. know, dancing, doing ecstatic dance. Gosh, how, yeah. how incredible is that? You know, and practicing right. yoga, it's so good for you. And, and I, I don't know if you guys have ever done eye gazing rituals. You ever tried that? I haven't. I have. Have you? Once, yeah. yeah. You have? How did you find it, Shell? It was a trip. It seemed real. Uh, I can't even explain it. It was It was like I was in a trance. Yeah. I wasn't ready for it. I was mesmerizing. I thought this is, this is a joke. This is silly. And it was one of the most uh, interesting things I've ever done, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when you invest in it and you do it properly, the connection that you feel to another human is so powerful. And you, you meet all these well-intentioned people and you're doing these rituals and you're going, whoa, my heart's just exploding with love exactly. right now. There's just exactly so much goodwill and benevolence there. And also another thing they would do is hug. Everyone hugs for like a minimum of 20 seconds. And then you'd run into someone and you'd throw your arms around them oh, and nice. they just hold you. Yeah. And for mm. someone who is vulnerable and at times lonely to just be held like that. And it's, it's just like, it's, yeah. right. it's like a drug and it, it is a drug it because a drug. you hold a, a, you hold a hug for long enough and your body starts to release oxytocin. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all mm-hmm. those wonderful things were happening. Well, and, um, it's, and it's, I remember, Ashley, yeah. it sounds like, as I'm listening to you, which is really fascinating. And I don't know if I've ever talked to another cult survivor where I've felt this. It seemed like, this particular person, I don't even want to call him a guru that led the group, the person leading your group kind of covered all the bases of what could attract different types of people in because you've got, it's okay to love Jesus. It's okay to acknowledge yeah. Buddha. You've got astrology. Yeah. You've got hugging. You've got some sort of, you know, like you said, the eye gazing therapy. You've got yoga. You've got dancing. What did you guys not have? Like, there's a lot to attract yeah. people into this group. Yeah. Yeah. They've, they And they said that. They, we have everything. There's everything here. Come know? on, come yeah. all. We have something for everyone. Yeah. yeah. They have sacred sexuality. That's the other thing. Oh, that, that. I forgot you about know? that. Yeah. Yeah. Forget about all these negative, like, you know, um, kind of shallow 
bottom of the barrel sexual experiences that everyone's having in the world. This is the elevated stuff. Sure. You guys are going to, you know, and, and they use that energy to like spiritually grow. I think I'm yeah. Anyway. Right. So I, there's something else I was going to say. Um, oh, I remember I was, I went to a silent retreat with them mm. at one point. This was like fast forwarding. I went to a, it was like over, over new years. And I went to one of their sister schools, they call them. And I, I had the most profound meditative experiences. Like I had the, these experiences where my whole body just like came alive from the bottom up. And I felt like I was like, I felt like I was floating. My whole body was just electrified mm, wow. and I've never felt anything like it. It was, it was fantastic. And that was from meditating for days on end. And, you know, over the new year, because it was a silent retreat, no one could talk, but you could hug mm. and make eye contact and people would hug you and they'd put your hands like right here on your chest. And they'd kind of like feel like right onto your heart. And like that feeling was just intoxicating. I was like, you just felt so loved, you know? Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 So it's sad. I, Even talking about it, I miss it. I was like, I miss right. feeling that loved. <laughs> sure, right. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. how long of a time frame from when you started going until you kind of hit the the climax of where things started to unravel. Give us maybe that time frame. How many, how long was it? It was it wasn't it things didn't really unravel for me. It was kind of a tumultuous experience all the way through because I I got to Romania and this friend of mine um, like I don't want to sit here and shit on him because <laughs> right. you know he's vulnerable in his own way and he's a victim in his own way. But um, he was so caught up in what he was doing, I felt really abandoned by him. Mm. And when I got there, he kind of just like I felt like he kind of was gone with the wind, and mm. I was left to my own devices. And I felt a little bit alone in that sense, and I was feeling resentment around mm. that. But then I was already invested in the journey. But then when I got back to Australia looking back on Romania, I was like, that was kind of weird. Like, I reckon that was a cult. I was really uncomfortable. There were things that happened. I saw like, like they made us watch a lot of pornography, like forced us to watch pornography. Like it was not optional viewing. Um, really? So yeah, I, and, I witnessed. And, and, then like, you're, and then you're supposed to do it, discuss it afterwards, or is it just kind of a silent watching? How, how did it play out? Oh, no, we all sit there with our popcorn, like a room full of women, and just watch porn on the big screen. Wow, like, okay. Yeah, and neurotic kind of art, I suppose they call it. It's really triggering. I remember I saw something once, and I was like, oh, no, that reminds me of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and like, sexual rituals. Like, I was the, I think, the only one who didn't participate, but I sat in, like, and watched this massive orgy um, of all women, and, yeah, they... They uh they all start like urinating into a bowl. There's all this urine play. They're all drinking each other's urine, and I'm sitting there going, "Whoa, this is this is super super weird." Well, you know why they do that, right? It's to desensitize you to any behavior. Yeah, because then it becomes yeah, more normal. and also yeah, that's like their kind of their crunch card. They're like, right, you know, right. You you get the ultimate connection by drinking each other's fluids. <laughs> right. <laughs> They say that it's like this kind of, you know, charged, you know, sacred water. Um, so stuff like that was happening. But but in in saying that, like the women that did participate, I think were doing so quite happily. But there was also a lot of women that were not, that were kind of forcing themselves to. Because I remember I had a lot of, I heard a lot of women saying, oh, I'm all about, you know, maybe like being sexual or kind of being involved in in the orgy part but they were really hesitant about the the urine part and I was like okay so how many people here are forcing themselves to do something they don't want to do because they think it's their ego mm. that's right. blocking them and and I for one felt really um I guess I kind of had this very small glimpse of what it must feel like for someone who's confused about their sexuality because I am attracted to men and I realized in that moment that I am only attracted to men right. and I felt so ashamed for not being attracted to women and I wanted to be and I was told that I should be and you know because women women polarize each other women yeah. women are supposed to be you know in love and amorous men no men no way and that never sat well with me mm. that never made sense to me that felt so wrong to me to say that men aren't allowed to but women are right and right. because like two negatives polarize each other but two positives don't like 
okay. <laughs> it um, doesn't even make it's sense. All about yeah. clarity, you know, like the negative and the positive of the yeah. battery. Yeah. And and I remember thinking like, okay, well that's my ego. It's my ego that I that I can't see that can't see the truth of that. But then I'd have, you know, gay men in my life and I think, no, but it doesn't it doesn't seem right, this belief that that men aren't supposed to be you know, attracted to men, it doesn't seem fair. Like it's not right. And it, it, it always like caused a lot of conflict in me. But then I was mm. like, look at all the other gazing and meditation and heart opening and wonderful experiences I have, you know, obviously my ego just doesn't get it. I was like, it's my ego that doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Mm. It'll make sense to me one day. Mm-hmm. And, um, in that moment I felt really, and it, they, they tell you, you know, if you have hesitancy and you don't want to be involved, that's your ego and you just need to get over right. that. So I was like, yeah. okay, common, so my ego is common blocking cult me from approach. being attracted yeah. to women. Yeah. yeah. I was like, my ego is blocking me from being attracted to women, um, you know, and there's something wrong with me and that's my problem. And it's like, that's how, you know, other people must feel in this world where they're kind of told what, who they should and shouldn't be attracted to and that sort of thing. Cause I was told, you know, yeah. you should be attracted to this and I wasn't. Right. And I was like, no, I, I, I think it's, I think me? it's one of the worst things me? with the, uh, with cultic groups is they try to control people's sexuality. I mean, it's such an individual mm. thing yeah. to each person and to basically try to, again, say there's this one size fits all uh, formula and, and this is just the way everyone should be wired. It's just not accurate. We're all wired differently. And, and it, we are. We're all wired yeah. differently, and every single different wiring is is natural and ex- well beyond acceptable. It's right. it's um, right. it's to be embraced, right? Exactly. Well, and it damages so, the, it damages the psyche in ways that nothing else does. When you yeah, you, right when you try to force that people's sexuality on them, I think it just it yeah. damages people in an, in a profound way. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And mm-hmm. I remember a girl approached me um, after like one of these things and she said to me, like, I'm so impressed and I admire you so much that you were able to sit aside of that and not get involved and not get swept in, you know, despite mm-hmm. people trying to draw me in and me saying, no, this just isn't for me. Mm-hmm. She's like, I really admire and I respect that. I was like, thank you. Um, well, from here, how did yeah. it evolve? Because weren't some people in the group yeah. involved in actual trafficking? Yes. Okay. So we'll... we'll I'll push forward. So I went to, I went back home to Australia. I was like, that was super weird. Mm. Um, a lot of weird stuff happened there that felt like a cult, very uncomfortable. So I spoke to this other friend. So remember at the start, I said, I messaged two friends. Yes. I spoke to this other friend who happened to be um, at my brother's wedding, happened to be in Australia at the time. It was actually at my brother's wedding that, you know, we had a really good talk. And I was like, he's really grounded. He's really rational. He, um, He's not, doesn't seem as kind of brainwashed or kind of as into this as this other guy. And he's still part of it and he's still involved in it and he's had issues, but he's kind of pushed past them and he's still, he still sees merit here. And I trusted him and he Mm -hmm. never told me specifically, you should go back. But that conversation definitely planted the seed because I was like, okay, well, if he's doing it, maybe, maybe it is okay. So I went back to the UK and I was really deeply depressed I was in a really really bad way and it was the day before my birthday and I was kind of journaling saying I can't even cope with the fact that it's my birthday tomorrow I just want to go to sleep I just want to go to sleep and I want everything to go away Mm. and I just can't cope with the thought of all these messages coming in and bombarding me you know I yeah I I'm just I mean I'm just frozen I just want I just can't I was so confused I didn't know what was real I was like was it a cult wasn't it a cult and, and who am I? And, you know, I was, I was, I'd been through, you know, just, I was just, I was in a bad way. Yeah. And in the journal, as I was writing, I was like, go to the yoga school, go tomorrow, go to the yoga school. Mm. And I did, I went the next day as my gift to myself, right? Like you deserve to feel happy. So go to the, and I walked in and, you know, they've got the incense burning and <laughs> the place looks clean and beautiful and it's warm. And I saw familiar faces that I'd met in Romania I went in and I sat down on the mat and they started playing this enchanting music and I meditated and my heart just like, it was like the vice had just been undone. And I was like, oh my God, oh, this is not a cult. Like how on (laughs) earth could you have thought this was a cult? How stupid, Ashley, you're so paranoid. Why did you think this was a cult? Oh my goodness. And then I was hooked. I was straight back in. I was, I was like, I'm going to sign up to the yoga classes, the tantra classes, the astrology classes. And even though I lived on the other side of the city, I was traveling quite long distances every day to go to my classes. Um, 
And I was, even though I was still struggling with my mental health, um, the relief that I got, I got in those classes usually from practicing the yoga and the meditation. And I was struggling to kind of go out and be social. So I was, I definitely felt isolated from the friendships that I'd made Mm -hmm. outside of the school. And I wasn't going to events and that sort of thing. And when I did go, I felt really lonely. I didn't feel part of it, you know, because they're starting to create this us and them mentality. And I just didn't feel understood or seen. And I was bound by secrecy. Couldn't really talk about what had happened. Then um, I was invited by one of the staff um, had said to me, like, you've been invited to go meet the guru and it's integrated for you and on these dates. And, wow. you know, you you can say no, but because um, the guru is like, he's he he's like in hiding like he's right not, you, you he's can't like royalty him. like he's, he's royalty in the group yeah. yep yeah and you know this is such an exciting opportunity i'm so excited for you like this is incredible like you know so few people get this, such an incredible opportunity like this and he said it's integrated for you and like this man's a spiritual master supposedly he's, he's enlightened he's not even human you know yeah right. and my body was like no, I don't <laughs> want this. A physical response. Because I'd kind of, yeah. yeah, like I'd had this feeling and I was getting this inkling. I was like, I think that they're like initiating, like sexually initiating women. I think the women are sleeping with him under this guise of Tantra because we'd had uh, watched this video of, of a man that like kind of groomed a woman on a boat and like kind of was like a father figure, but then then ended up being her master and and married her. I don't know. I was yeah. like, I just was like, I, I kind of had this feeling, but I didn't want to believe it. And I was like, if this man really is my master and he really is a spiritual guru, he will know that that is not what I need. He will know that I need mm. the techniques that they promise salvation with. You know, if you, yeah. if you practice these, if you do these things and meditate, you will feel better. And if he's my spiritual master, he'll know that. He'll know that's what I need. Right. Right. And, sure. you know, and surrender, 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 surrender. So I really didn't want to go, but I also felt like I couldn't say no. You know, when someone's telling you that an enlightened being wants to meet you on these days, like if you believe that they really are a master, you're not going to say of no. Of course. Of course. And you don't want to let your ego I, get in the way. Remember? They've been. Yeah. Yeah. And I couldn't tell anyone, you know, I was sworn to secrecy. So I had to lie and say that I was going, you know, somewhere else and. I was seeing a guy at the time um, who had kind of like made all these promises of like, you know, I want to literally like word for word, like I want to wake up next to the most beautiful woman in the world for the rest of my life. Like that's you, Ashley, like, you know, um, we can go back to Australia and get married and um, talked about like where we would build a house and, you know, just telling me all these, telling me all these things that I wanted to hear and kind of, I really threw myself in like I, I can I have a tendency to do that in relationships and I just kind of ate up every word that he said um and then I ended up going to see him like I went to visit him for a holiday and then I came back to um London and he dumped me like completely out of the blue like I remember I sat on the I sat on a call with him for like two hours sitting in a park and quote he said you have no idea how beautiful you look right now. I could give you a thousand kisses right now. You just look so beautiful. And he was saying to me, we were, ta- we were planning Christmas. He was like, yeah, we'll, we'll go to Christmas. We'll go to Queensland. Like we were talking about logistics. I was going to go see him on this boat that he was on and like everything was fine. Right. And then um, I hung up because we started to get bad connection and I was sitting in a cafe and he was like, what are you doing right now? I was like, I'm just having my lunch. I'm about to go get a massage. And he's like, okay, cool. Drops this message on me of like, hey, I don't really like want this to like mean it, like say anything, but like I don't want to get into a relationship right now and kind of feels like that's what's happening and like I'm not ready to fall in love and like I don't really want any of that and, um, you know, and it's just kind of like I'm not really – like I'm not really meaning anything by what I'm saying. I'm just – but yeah, like I just was he bipolar? Wanna, like, get into anything. What was happening theory. there? <laughs> I know. I was like, what? It's odd. Wow. Um, yeah. And he, yeah, he dumped me like, st- like right there and then. And, dumped, and so I was like distraught oh, because yes. I have this, this kind of anxious attachment style anyway. So, and so the person I called was the friend in the cult and he was to his credit, incredible. I remember I was standing on the street, bawling my eyes out outside this pub in London to the point where this woman was like, are you, are you okay? Like, do you need help? I was like, I'm fine. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. Um, yeah. And he was wonderful. He was like, Ash, we need to get you over here. Like, we're going to heal your heart. You know, you're going to be okay. And to his credit, with the best of intentions, he was there for me in that moment, like no one else was. And he saw me and he understood me. And, um, and I, so immediately in that pain, I was turning to the school and to yeah. the cult because that guy wasn't in the cult. The guy that, that you know, had done that was not part of the cult. Of course, yeah, of course. And um, so I threw myself even harder into the school in kind of the wake of that. Sure. And then I was had to organize to go to, to Paris. They told me I was going to go to Paris um, and I was terrified, but I got on the Eurostar. I went there and they picked me up in this car um, that was full of women and there was a male driver and they gave me a rose that was supposedly from the guru and chocolate. And then we're driving out of the city and they make us put these like bucket hats, like pulled down over our eyes with like, and then sunglasses with like duct tape on what? the inside so that you can't, See, yeah, really? yeah, because like for his protection, right? Because like, oh you know, my gosh, you know, like, yeah. So we're like blindfolded. So I had no idea where we, where I was in the city. So we get taken to this house. Like all the windows are frosted over. You're oh not allowed gosh. to go outside. Um, you don't know where you are. Don't speak the language. They take all of your belongings and go through. Like they meticulously search everything. So wow. they took every single electrical item that I owned, like my my laptop, my iPad, my um my phone Your phone yeah they clearly were afraid of something or being recorded yeah which is yeah oh yeah um, they they wrapped they wrapped um my phone they took the sim card out of my phone and wrapped that in foil and in then foil. wrapped the phone in foil and wrapped my passport in foil <laughs> and was like she's like yeah we're like the fbi um uh. so yeah they took everything and they, they locked it all in a safe they still i still had my passport but they everything else was locked away um so I couldn't just leave, you know, right, couldn't right. just walk out. Mm -hmm. um, and I also had no idea where I was, you know. Right. And and we're in this house where sometimes they keep women for like months on end and they're grooming them, you know, because we're, they're going to go have their meeting with the guru or they're meeting him for the sixth or the seventh or the eighth or the thirtieth time, um, which is interesting, right, because if he initiates you and you get all these wonderful things, wouldn't you get it, wouldn't you just be one and done? Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't that be it? Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, why right. do you have to keep going back? Um, so he can charge you with his magic stick. Anyway, sorry. I'm gonna, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So, oh boy. Yeah. I yeah. Can see, yeah. Yeah. So they make you start reading all these like texts about, um, supposedly ancient, but they're written by him. Like I know his prose. I know the way that he writes. Right, and I was like, right. this is written by him. And it's saying that, you know, if you get the opportunity to be initiated and you say no, it's because you're a stupid, superficial, fluctuating, shifty woman um, that's destined for life suffering and negative right. trauma. But if you say yes, like you're going to get charisma or bigger boobs and you're going to have this <laughs> and that. And blah, blah, they, and they, like, did you say bigger boobs? They promise bigger boobs. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, so oh like he God. gave me a tapas, which is like a um, – like a, an assignment of like what you're supposed to do. It was supposed to be for three years. I was meant to like hold all these different postures for like two hours each and do breast massage, like this many directions, like this way and oh like this God. many that way. And like more focus on the left one because it's smaller. And I was like, I didn't even notice a size difference here. Like I don't have a body image issue and you're creating you're one You're creating right one. Yeah. Like, Ashley, you're yeah. making me want to try to go find this guy. And <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to deal with yeah. my own anger right now, but go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And they like, oh, you know, they're no. disempowering women's bodies. They're saying they're empowering them. How is that empowering? By pu pulling out a woman's flaws that she it's, doesn't even think that she has. And it's all twisted. It, like it's, it's telling all, her to fix yeah. them. Like, yeah. It's mind um, control. It's all mind control. It's all mind control. Yeah. And I was summoned to, like, I couldn't get out. I was there for a week. I was losing my mind. This is when the split really started to happen um, because I was kind of like, they would, they would, making me watch the most vile pornography to kind of like try and desensitize you exactly. and like read all these texts about yeah. being initiated it was very clear. That's, that's why you're there. That's, that's why everyone's there. And I was like, I don't want this. Like my body was like, I don't want this. And they're like, you know, he will never do anything that you wouldn't want to do. He'll never do anything to hurt you. And, but I'd met this girl um, and kind of the walls have ears. So you, you speak yeah. quietly, but it, we had this kind of, this understanding without really saying a lot and she had just been initiated by him and she was not okay she, and when you, you say initiated 
It's having having it's sex, sex with them, right? Yeah. A sexual ritual. Yeah, I just like want to make sure. Yeah, it's a sexual abuse. ritual. Right. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So they, yeah, it's like a series of they, um, yeah, it's yeah. just a big sexual right. thing. And um, I could see that she wasn't okay. And I was like, this text is saying that he's going to have all these wonderful effects. She doesn't have that. And it says like, if there's something really, really wrong with you, you might initially say yes. And then afterwards you decide that you want to say no, you can't do that. You can't decide halfway through. You don't want to do it anymore. If you say yes, you've got to commit to yes. And I was like, part of consent is that you can retract right. it at any time. Yeah, right. right. Exactly. Legally, legally mm. speaking. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't do that in, in this situation. And also you've, you've taken vows again on your health and your spiritual evolution and on the Bible. And if you break the vows, like you commit to us, you have to like, commit to punishments and like sign sign like agreeing to certain punishments and i remember i had to agree to a punishment of shaving my head that they could shave my head immediately for five years if i um was caught trying to steal any of their secret teachings like if i got caught trying to take any of the secrets out of that environment Mm -hmm. they would shave my head for five years and then and a lot of the women do they do (coughs) shave their head i think you know as part of kind of trying to bring them down bring them off their like their high horse, like like the woman who had won the Miss Shakti contest, which is this contest that's basically a beauty pageant, she was there and she had had her head shaved. I saw that her head had been shaved and she was kept like out in a shed for like oh months on end gosh. and had no contact with any women. It's like, oh hey, God. you won this competition. Congratulations. We're going to hold you in captivity in a shed like and shave your head and abuse you. So, so did um, what happened with you? Did 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 you go to the initiation? I mean, what happened? No, I put my foot down. I was I was having a full ment. I I got my snapping point came, and mm. the snapping point for me was like, I saw that this girl was not okay. Right, and she'd left by this point, and I'd had to write. I wrote this letter to him saying that like I, I used I feel statements. I was like I feel really afraid and scared that. You know, when you say that I'm going to be destined for a life of ne- negative, um, negativity and suffering and bad karma, when you say this, like, you know, um, it feels like a forced ultimatum. You know, I didn't go looking for Tantra. I, I'm looking for yoga and I'm really hoping that you can guide me using the the postures and the the yoga that, you know, promised, promised you know, posit- positive effects. Can you do this for me? Blah, blah, blah. And he responded and he'd written all over it in red fountain pen that's just kind of burned into my retinas. And it was like, you lie, you lie and you exaggerate because you like to live a lie because you have a big ego and a great <laughs> bad will, like capital letters, double wow. underlined. Wow. And I was like, a bad will? And I was like, oh my God, am I a bad person? Do I have a bad will? Like, ah, oh, jeez. Oh, and I remember that I was crying and this other girl was like, it's okay. Like, you're not a bad person. Like, you don't like, and I was like, he said I have a bad will. Like, and and he said, you know, only you respond in this way because you're manipulated by demons who don't want you to receive divine power. And he said that, like, <sighs> doing the initiation would have an exorcism effect. So having sex with me would exorcise my demons was what oh he told God. me. Oh. Yeah. And, um, oh. and, and then he'd, like, attach this little thing to it that said, like, if um, – tell her to watch the test because they force all the women to make testimony videos afterwards saying how wonderful it was. And he said, um, watch the video of this other girl. Um, and that was, for some reason, after all the things that could have made me snap, that was the point. And I was like, if you were my guru and you really understood me, you would know that that girl was telling you what you wanted to hear because mm-hmm. she told me that specifically so that she could just get out and go home and that she wasn't okay. So you don't know anything because you, if you knew, you wouldn't ask me to watch that. But I did watch it. And it was horrible to see this woman like stripped naked and sitting there and being forced to say like, yeah, it was nice. Like I, you know, and, and then they forced her to like grab this piece of paper at the end that says like, and if I forget all the wonderful states that I had, then I'm a shifty superficial woman and I should watch this video again in order to remember. I was just like, this is next level manipulation. And I was like, I want to leave now. Like I want to leave right now. And they couldn't. They're like, you have to get his permission. Like, you can't just leave. We have to get his permission to let you leave. And I was like, I want to go right now. I don't want to wait. I want to go now. Like, right now. Right. No, we can't. You have to write to him and get permission. So I had to write a letter by hand, wait for them to get a car, to drive it across the city, to deliver to him, for then him to give an answer and drive back. By that time, it was like 12 o'clock at night. And it's like, well, we can't just take you out and put you on the street at 12 o'clock at night. So you're just going to have to wait until tomorrow. 
And then the next day, like the whole day, like waiting, waiting, waiting. And they're just of taking course. their sweet ass time. They I make you like, wait. I, yeah. Yeah. And eventually they, I, and they said, where do you want to go? And I was like, just take me to the cheapest hotel that you can. They took me to a Formula One hotel and I just collapsed on the floor. And I just remember like hyperventilating on the floor and just oh, being like, <gasps> what is real? I don't know what I was just. I was, and wow. then I went and went for a walk and I remember sitting under the Eiffel Tower and I was like, this is a dream. I was like, I want someone to just walk past who knows me right now. Like, can someone just walk past who I know that this is real and pull me out of this lie? You know, see me in Paris and, and tell someone so that I don't have to pretend that I'm not here. And I was like, this can't be real. I can't be sitting under the Eiffel Tower right now. And I was too scared to take a photo. Like, I was in such a state. I was too scared to even take a photo. Wow. And, yeah, and... I sat in that room for like two days. I tried to contact my friend, but he was having phone detox. So he didn't answer his phone. Phone detox. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was meant to be going to visit him. So instead of going to visit him um, after sort of sitting for a day and freaking out, I got a one-way flight back to Australia. It cost me like two and a half thousand dollars. Went to the airport, flew home. I was like, surprise, mom and dad. I'm back early. I got sick of the silent retreat. Um, and, and that was that. Was well, that? what was the so, time frame, I, though? So, like, how long from beginning to end? How long would you say that was? Like 18 months, which okay. is short in terms of, like, cult experiences. That is short. But it sounds like, like it was a very condensed so, experience. So did did, yeah. did, uh, did you uh, experience any PTSD uh, after yeah, you left? Yeah I, yeah, I did. Like, I was feeling really triggered by by a lot of things and a lot of kind of invasive thoughts and I was having a lot of trouble sleeping and I was really depressed and not in a good way. And that troubled me for quite some time. I actually don't think I would meet the criteria for PTSD anymore mm -hmm. um, because I was read, I've been reading about it and right. people that do meet the criteria at one point don't necessarily meet it later. And, but I went to a psychiatrist and I was like, I'm, 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 I'm something's not right. I'm not okay. And he mm. was like, yeah, you have PTSD. And, I've been doing a lot of work on myself to become confident in who I am and that I make good decisions and I make good judgments and I can trust people. Although it's not helping when like you keep trying to trust people, um, like especially in the dating world, like I try and trust men mm -hmm. and they continually kind of let me down and reinforce this idea of like men can't be trusted. Men can't be trusted. Men are going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. um, so so it's, it's hard when the external environment is reinforcing that belief, right. but I'm really working on like reminding myself that I can, I can trust people mm -hmm. and I can trust the world and I can trust life and yeah, existence. Sure. You know, and, yourse and, and yourself and yourself. Yeah. 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 And there is this kind of sense of, are you familiar with the concept of post-traumatic growth? Yes. I mm -hmm. love that. Yeah. yeah. It's one of yeah, the things I talk really, about. I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Some really cool literature on it and i, I love that yeah. i really feel like i've, I've had that i found this yeah. kind of new appreciation of life and new kind of meaning and depth in my relationships especially with like my family and my closest friends um new possibilities in life you know sure I, sure no i never thought that i would make an awareness page about cults and be connecting with in these incredible people on say, the other side say of the, the world name of it again <laughs> since right. this is ash yeah. since this is part two say the name of your social media platform oh, on your platform again yeah cult cultivate awareness cultivate is, awareness um, yeah, cult so i recommend cultivate. everybody to check that out you're on instagram i think you're working on a website i am but i am tech incompetent i bought the domain and then i was like i don't know what to do with this oh, i don't know how to build you'll, a website you'll, you'll, you'll sort, get there you'll sort it out yeah uh, so so yeah, i do i want to yeah, so increase looking, the accessibility. Mm -hmm. Looking at your recovery process, like did did you go through? I mean, obviously you've done a ton of homework, and so at what point did you actually start to investigate? Like this may might be a cult, and 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 uh, how did that path kind of unfold for you? And and then uh, if you're anything like I did, you became voracious about the the subject matter. But uh, oh yeah, so yeah. so how did it play yeah. out for you? So I got back and I was. I didn't talk about what had happened to me for several months because I was sworn to secrecy and I was terrified of breaking those vows. Mm. But I was doing deep dives on the internet and researching cults, trying to understand them. Every night I was reading, reading, mm -hmm. reading. But I felt a lot of the a lot of the websites were kind of dark and ominous or clinical and I just felt a bit like gave me all the heebie-jeebies and I was like, I really 
need there to be some accessible, not intimidating information out there for people like me to go and read, like, you know, right. infographics on Instagram that are mm-hmm. friendly looking that, yes, right. they're talking about serious topics, but kind of normalizing it a little bit mm-hmm. because it wasn't, it didn't feel normal. It felt really weird. Like the, the websites I was having to dive into were like these old websites with like a white background and black <laughs> plain writing. And I was like, was it a cult? Was it a cult? And the more I thought about it and saw like the, the mechanism, the, the more I understood what had happened to me, the more painful it was, you know, the yeah. more that you kind of go, sure. oh, this is a process. This is, this is something that has a, a mechanism or a kind of systematic quality to it that can be rolled out in many different contexts and have the yeah. same effect. Mm. Mm-hmm. And that it is, as dark and ominous as what it feels and to kind of acknowledge that it's painful and you kind of feel worse for a little bit. And I did feel worse. I felt terrible for a long time until I was able to talk about it. I, I I would have these episodes of just violently crying when I was triggered by a song or something. I would just (laughs) get it it out. Yeah. And And I I had this. Yeah. No, I I love to hear how the talking helped you because that's one of the things obviously were p- big proponents of like uh, how did that unfold for you like when getting up the courage to talk did you first start with family or friends or how did it unfold um i i had this sensation for a while that i like i physically felt like my tongue was tied to the back of my throat mm. and i can't remember the first person i told i think the first few people i told was when i was extremely drunk like i got extremely drunk Mm -hmm. truth serum i call it truth serum you had some truth serum (laughs) alcohol yeah and i just blurted it out yeah um i remember there was one incident one of the first people i told was a was a friend and this guy is very calm very rational very very chilled out sort of friend and he sort of like just stood there not responding but i was like you know kind of trying to gauge his reaction he's like this is terrible this is not okay like Mm. and i was like oh he thinks this is really bad And then you tell another person, they're like, this is the most messed up thing I've ever heard. And you're like, really? Is it? Oh, okay. It is bad then. I thought it was bad. And you get that feedback from people. And then I, you know, with my girl, like my best girlfriends, we went away for a weekend, got drunk, told them. And I was kind of fine. I was kind of, you know, talking kind of the way I am now. And they're all just kind of like watching me like. (laughs) Right. They're like, what? (laughs) <laughs> and they're like, how are you not in a hospital right now? Like, this is this is absolutely horrific. And the more that you kind of gauge people's responses, the more you realize how bad it really is. And they're like, how are you not? And then they're like, oh, here it comes. Here it comes. And I just like started crying. Yeah. Right. And my best friend just held me. And every single one of those girls cried with me in that moment. Like, I'm going to cry just thinking about it. That yeah. the entire room just cried when it kind of weighs on you, like how bad it really is because what, you don't realize you don't, no. you don't yeah. think about it. Yeah. And what you say, it's validating you talk- too, though, Ashley, in those moments, like I found those moments validating, like, okay, this is really as bad as it feels. Yeah. 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 And you think it, you, you think it feels bad, but you rationalize it in your head and you're like, it's not that bad. I'm, I'm being dramatic. Like it's, it's fine. And then you're like, no, this is human trafficking and ritualized systematic sexual abuse of hundreds, if not thousands of women that is happening every day right yeah. under our noses. Mm. That There it is. You just and said it. You just summed it up. That's exactly what it was. That's exactly yeah. what it was. And, 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 and I have this, and the way, you know, and the way, yeah. and the way you take your power back is to call it out and, and talk about it and, and, uh, and share the story. I mean, it's a very, very powerful, <laughs> powerful story. Well, and exactly. Ashley, you've and got you've got to. some really exciting things coming up in your life, and down the road, Sorry. you got to promise to come back on, and then when you can share those things. Oh, you have my word. Okay, I'll, I'll be back, we, but we, I will come back in person. Oh, oh yeah, I was just gonna <laughs> say that. I was just gonna say that. That yeah. would be fantastic. That would be fan. And then you can kind and, of and, announce and, what's and happening. And, and we're good at giving hugs too. Yes, we are. <laughs> oh yes, I miss having those hugs in yeah. my life. Hey, yeah. and I forgot I to ask you: so Did you so. want to mention the other TV show that you were on, or do you prefer to not mention that? Oh, <laughs> we can talk about that. That's fine. <laughs> Just because um, you're you're yeah, good on so, camera. My point is you're good on camera, girl. Ah, thanks, Shell. You're very good on camera. Um, I saw I saw a little I, a little peek of it. Oh, thank you. I 
well, I thought crazier things have happened in my life. You know, I was like, I just escaped this cult and I was talking to my colleagues and we sort of jokingly said, why don't you apply for farmer wants a wife? And I was like, oh, maybe I will. And I went and looked at all the different farmers and I was like, oh, none of them are really grabbing me. I was like, I wonder if the bachelor's casting. And I looked and it's like casting now. And I was like, had my glass of wine and I was like, okay, I'll apply. And I like <laughs> spent three hours or whatever it was filling out all the questions. And then I kind of treated it like a journaling exercise. I was like, right. no one's ever going to pick me, but at least it gets me thinking about myself yeah. and my narrative and who right. I am and what I care about. And then at the end it said, um, you need to submit a video. And I was like, oh, I'm not doing a video. <laughs> no more videos. So I went to work and then um, the next day it came up with the like reminder email, like don't forget to finish submitting your application. I was like, oh, whatever. So I pulled my friend. I was wearing this jumper actually. Now I think about it. It was this jumper. I was wearing it. And I pulled it out. I was at the office and I was like, um, because it's like, why should you be on the batch? And I was like, yeah, pick me because um, – I think it's a fairy tale at waiting to be lived. And, you know, I said something, it went for 30 seconds, hit submit. And then two months later, they casting people were like, Hey, we loved your application. We'd love to audition you. And I was like, what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, let's just, that'd be cool to see what it's like to audition. Never thought I would get sure, any further than sure. that. And then it just kind of like continued to like spiral. And it's like, yeah, now you get to the next stage and the next stage and the next stage. And now you're on the red carpet meeting the bachelor. I was oh, like, wow, I didn't think my life could get any weirder. Here we are. <laughs> and this was the Bachelor Australia version, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that was a fun experience, if not um, crazy. Yeah, but why not, was, right? Hey. Why not yeah. live a little? It was emotionally, emotionally loaded. I mean, I didn't have a very big role in it. I was only there for like maybe five, five or so weeks. Um, and I was sent home. I think episode six or something like that. So I, I, and I really like got relegated to the background in a lot of content. Like when I was there, I was really there, but on the screen, I wasn't really a huge part of it. Right. Um, but that's probably a blessing. That yeah. That's probably a blessing because yeah. then you got to experience it, but not have a lot of the public, you know, Overkill, yeah. 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 Commentating exactly. on your life. Well, Ashley, we're going to have to have you back. Uh, we Ashley, have to have you back in person. I'm not even done, yeah. but our time is up. Yeah. And I know yeah. you've got to drive, you know, halfway across Australia today, I yeah. believe, and head out. To yeah. Your... I got to go visit, got to go visit some uh, students, work on some speech sounds and oh, communication. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, we, we can't thank you enough. And, yes. and uh, you've been incredibly courageous uh, and all that you've done and your ability to convey your story is remarkable and just because can't thank you enough. Well, and that's a perfect timing to end with our quote because this quote is you, Ashley. So here we go. She was powerful, not because she wasn't scared, but because she went on so strongly despite the fear by Atticus. That is you, Ashley. Never forget that. Shell, you're too kind. Thank you so much. We will, we Thank will you have so much you for back. having me. Yes, we'll be Absolutely. talking. I have a feeling we're going to be lifelong yeah. friends. Sorry, you're stuck with <laughs> yep. us now. Yeah, yeah, you're stuck with me too. Sorry, guys, yes. this is not the end. No, good uh, stuff. I'll see you in person yes. at Look, some point. I'm going to come see you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Well, Absolutely. And as always, my dear friends, guard your hearts and your minds. No one else but you should have control of these. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Oh, oh.